In this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the best looking projectors on the market. And as good as it physically looks, does the picture match up? So I've managed to get my hands on this Nebula Cosmos 4K laser projector. Now this projector is made by the company Anchor. They've not sent it to me and this video is not sponsored. These are my honest opinions. Now you cannot argue that it doesn't look good on the outside. But today we're going to find out if it is actually as good as it looks. So it is 4K, you can get a 1080p version. It supports HDR10, it runs Android TV, and one of the highlights of a projector like this is that it actually supports Netflix natively. I cannot tell you how annoying it is that no projector supports Netflix. This is actually the first one that I've reviewed that has it built in and working. So the projector weighs just under 5 kilograms and just under about 11 pounds. And it is a pretty heavy piece of kit. Now, it doesn't mean it's not portable, it's got a massive handle on the top. Underneath the handle it is rubberized, which means it's actually very easy to grip, and because of that big handle, it's not hard to get around, even though it's quite heavy. Now, it does have that gum metal coating on the outside. It isn't metal, it is plastic, but it does look very good, and it still feels pretty quality. I really like the gum metal color choice, and with the sort of perforated speaker holes and fan holes, it actually looks really, really nice. And I'm a massive fan of the red detailing around the lens and the Nebula logo. On the back of the projector we do have a power port, one HDMI port and a USB port. There's also an auxiliary audio out as well so if you want to use that that is an option for you. And inside this little hatch at the back there is a little port for a media dongle. In a sense this media dongle is the brains of the projector. So that is where your Android TV is installed and that's where you're going to be accessing all of your streaming apps and content that way. Now I would describe this projector as a semi-portable projector. It's not a portable projector in the fact that it doesn't have a battery inside it, but it is actually much easier to just switch on and use than most normal projectors. It does have automatic focusing and auto keystoning as well, so that means you can sort of just put it down anywhere, face it at any wall, and it's going to be getting you that perfect aspect ratio that you should expect. Now it does all of this using the sensors on the front of the projector. Now I think if this did have a battery in it, it would be the perfect portable projector, but Unfortunately, power requirements and stuff to actually have a decent projector means that it's going to need to be plugged in. Now, there are two ways of controlling this projector. One of them is with the remote. It's a fairly nice and simple design. You get some shortcuts to your favorite apps and just basic navigational tools. The other way of operating the projector is actually from the touchpad at the top. If I touch up here, you can see that the panel will light up. And once it's lit up, you can see all of the buttons that you got. You can navigate around different apps. You can also do things like change the volume, which is really nice. So as I mentioned earlier, like most projectors, that this projector does run Android TV. Now, Android TV is a perfectly fine operating system. Luckily, the chip inside this is actually quite quick and it navigates Android TV pretty well. Ultimately, I didn't really notice much delay when I'm going around different apps. So for ease of use and for actually getting around this thing, this thing definitely ticks the box. Now, because it's Android TV, it means you can download apps from the Google Play Store. That's anything from normal streaming apps to potentially even games. Now, I would say I wouldn't recommend playing games on this. It's powerful enough for navigating apps, I wouldn't say it's particularly well built to play games on. Now one of the apps that on other smart projectors just doesn't ever work is Netflix. Now they actually do have a license for Netflix with this projector and because they have that it means that you can just load up the app and watch it like on any normal TV, streaming stick or anything. It's not like annoying projectors where they just don't have support for it. If you haven't seen any of my other projector reviews, I can assure you it is one of the most frustrating things about buying a projector in this day and age. Now because this is a laser projector, it does have some pros and cons. The pros of a laser projector is that the colours are very good and so is the contrast. A lot of the time projectors can feel a little bit washed out, especially if there's any ambient light going around. With a laser projector, your colours do tend to be a bit more saturated. Now one of the issues of laser projectors is that you can get something called rainbow effect. Now this is a weird one and for some people they're more susceptible to it than others. I don't really understand the physics or the biology of it but that is just the case. Personally I don't get affected by it so I can't really make a massive comment on it. I have heard from other people that this isn't actually the worst for rainbow effect so bear that in mind. But unfortunately I'm not really a reliable source so I tend to not care. Is it that I have good eyes or is it that I'm not very observant? 
probably both. Now being a semi-portable projector brings good things and bad things. The good things are that you can set it up and play it anywhere, you just need a power source. The problem is, is that it doesn't necessarily have the most compatibility that a built-in projector might have. Namely, it's only got one HDMI port and it's got no real audio out other than an auxiliary port. Now I would have liked them to at least include an optical audio out or HDMI ARC, but only having one HDMI port for me isn't really good enough. That being said, the speakers are actually pretty good. But if this is a projector you're just going to whip out on the odd use, being semi-portable, do you need all of those ports? Probably not. Now also because it is a portable projector, it's not something that you're necessarily going to be mounting. You can mount it on a tripod or on a fixed base. It's got a standard sort of camera tripod port at the bottom and you can also ceiling mount it using that port. I don't really know if I would sort of trust that fitting but it is there if you want to use it. Now if you just pop the projector on the side, it's actually not necessarily going to be hitting a screen that's up in the air which is a little bit frustrating and there's no sort of ways to adjust it other than necessarily propping it up with something underneath it. Now you can flip it over on its head as if you're going to scene mount it and if you pop it on the floor it is going to prop the projector at an angle so potentially you can use that to get to the angle you want to get it at but there's no sort of rubber foot grips or anything like that on the top of the projector so you might get some scuffs or scratches on it and also you're now not going to be able to access the touch ports so maybe it's just worth propping up with a couple of books or a tripod. So how good is this projector? Well, luckily it's got something going in its favour. It's very bright. It's got 2400 ISO lumens, which is actually very, very good. It works out about 3000 ANSI lumens, so if you're comparing it to other projectors, that's a good way of doing it. So because this projector is very bright, it means that you are going to get a very good image, even if it's not necessarily the darkest room. Now I use an ALR screen, which is a screen designed to reject ambient light, which I think is probably the best way of watching a projector, but you can just project this onto any sort of wall, and because it's very bright, you're going to be getting a good image. Now I would say the colours are fairly accurate out of the box. Now I couldn't actually find a way of adjusting the colours and the picture settings when I was in the projector, which is actually a bit of an issue in my opinion. Some people like to change things and customise it, and this isn't a projector for customization. so if you're going to be getting this, just bear in mind, you're going to be stuck with it out of the box. That being said, colours and accuracy and everything like that out of the box is very good, so it's not really a massive issue in my personal opinion. Now as it does have that one HDMI port, I did plug in my Xbox to have a bit of a play and see what the gaming was like on it. Now it is a 60Hz projector at 4K, it doesn't go any higher than that, so if you're planning on playing games at 120Hz, it's not going to happen. Now I couldn't actually find any exact numbers for input lag, but from my personal experience it was alright, it wasn't the snappiest thing I've ever had, laser projectors tend to have a bit of a delay, but it wasn't unplayable, and when I was playing games I wasn't getting distracted or getting frustrated by that input lag. So something that is actually very important to consider is the price. Now you can get this in the UK for about two grand and it goes up to about $2,200 in the US. Now if that sounds a little bit too pricey for you, you can go for the 1080p version and save yourselves a few hundred pounds. I will stick links to both of those in the description below, so if you are interested please do go down and check them out. But what is my verdict? I think this projector is actually a fantastic option for you. Now if you're looking for a projector that looks really cool on the shelf but also packs a punch then this is going to be a fantastic option for you. Now I would say this is probably a good contender against the Xgmi Horizon Pro but I think I could probably cover that in another video. So if you want to see that, comment down below and maybe we can make it happen. But if you do want to see my review of the Xgmi Horizon Pro, you can click it somewhere around here and I will see you in the next one. Whoop.